What is up guys? I've gotten so many questions about AD in Season 6 that I really wanted to put all of my thoughts down into just one good video that you can watch and understand how Season 6 is different and what you need to do in order to climb to Diamond playing it. Even if you don't actually main AD carry, this will still make you better at the role or just maybe the game in general, so at least there is that as well. Now thank you again to ProGuys for editing this together for me. You can check out all of their guides and stuff down in the link below. Now I've been playing AD carry for like like four years now and I do honestly think it is a bit harder to climb this season than it has been before but there are things that you can do to make your life a lot easier and adapt. So the first one is what AD carry do you actually pick now in season six and there are kind of two different groups. You have like carry style AD carries and utility style AD carries. So the carry style is like carrying your team yourself. No matter how bad they are you can try to put them on your back. It's things like Vayne or Lucian. Your job is just to kill things. Utility style is more about helping your team do more. You can still carry yourself, but maybe a little bit less than the other style with the trade-off of having some tool to fall back on like Sivir's Speed Up or Ash's Arrow. Now both honestly work. It depends on you as a player, but personally I go for the carry style. If you're going to go for the carry style, then you kind of want some mobility to protect yourself and to kite. Everyone nowadays has a gap closer and we're building less defense, which means you need to dodge things more. This is why Ezreal and Lucian are top tier. They're safe, they're high damage and they're not team reliant. The utility side, the trade-off is kind of like a lack of mobility normally. Ash and Siva don't really have much, well they don't have any mobility really, but they work because we're seeing a lot more carry junglers, mid laners, top laners, and we can help them stay safer or kill things. Honestly, it's much more common for that kind of style to have a bad score but still win the game, but then you are relying on your team a bit more. So high mobility and the carry style is the most common and in my opinion the easiest way to climb in season 6. Six. You don't have to rely on your team. You can dodge damage and you can output a ton yourself safely. It's the most consistent and that's what we look for when we want to climb because it relies on you more than the four random teammates that you're going to get each game. Anyway, that is step one, okay? So pick AD carries that are actually going to help your climb and fit your playstyle. Think about why you are picking the AD and what you want to use them for. Next up is items in season six and it is a bit different. Basically, just don't build defense unless you need to. We can't afford to anymore. There are two big problems that I found. So first one is the enemy AD probably won't buy any defense. So you're going to do less damage than them. That's not good. That's pretty bad. And you won't be able to kill the tanks in front, which is also bad. Before this season, we'd aim for a mix of offense and defense. Things like more Sterex, Mercurial, Scimitar. But all three of those are now nerfed. The only really good option for defense is actually Guardian Angel. And that's pure defense. It doesn't give us any damage at all. And it's a huge waste of gold if it's on cooldown. The thing you have to realize as well, though, is without tanks in the the game you actually do need defense more. I know it sounds a bit weird and stuff but they have more damage on their team if they don't have tanks. You, know, you need less damage to kill them but it's more about surviving their damage to use yours. This is really just another reason why I say high mobility is king and why that's the easiest way to reliably climb the ladder. We dash, we shift, whatever. It means we can dodge stuff, we prevent the damage and there's no need for defense. So we save ourselves like 3000 gold and we buy more damage instead. Just to say really quickly, Guardian Angel is not terrible okay it's just not optimal at all if you can rely on dodging stuff and staying safe then you get more AD or crit or whatever instead of that safety net of the guardian angel if you can't stay safe that's fine okay just buy a guardian angel is better than you dying and you can output damage by not being afraid to auto attack the third step is how you play the lane phase now in season six this is probably one of the biggest adjustments you're going to have to make going from season five to season six early leads just mean more now it's just how it is you have to play for the lane phase if you can win it in every game I promise you you that you will climb so much faster. This is the number one thing I focus on now. If I can win my lane, I can do so much more. I actually looked at my match history for this video and at least 75% of the games I lose, if not more, are because I didn't win or I lost my lane. There obviously has to be a reason for that, otherwise I'm talking out of my ass, which let's hope I'm not. <laughs> if you're behind in season six, the first thing is you're gonna lose dragons and they are more important now. You also don't have enough damage to kill tanks, but it's kind of two-sided, okay? So on from that, it's even harder to build defense to stop their damage. Honestly, you're just behind, so you can't afford to. Think if, like, they have a volley bear and a little blanc. You need to build damage to get through volley. That's got to be your priority, right? Which means that the little blanc is going to kill you because you can't afford to build any defense. The utility AD carries are a little bit different. This is one of their strengths, right? But you still have kind of the same problem. You just can do a little bit more. Utility ADs are still better when your team is ahead so you can help them carry. You can come back for sure, but that's not really, like, best case. If you think about 
and ash arrow, right? What do you want to do? Do you want to catch someone and like arrow them and just pile onto them? Or do you want to use it so you can run away from someone running at you? I'd rather kill someone, honestly, when I'm ahead. There are three big things in lane as well that I really focus on. And this should actually help you quite a lot when you go into a lane phase. Number one, ganks actually screw you over so much more than they used to. So try to be aware of where the enemy jungler could be. Like watch the buff timers and stuff like that. Chances are they're going to be on the side of the map where their buff is spawning. Don't go like stupidly aggressive, kind of watch their behavior. And if the enemy support like runs at you, just give them a little bit of respect and hopefully at least you won't die. The second one is going to sound dumb, but buy health potions. Lane means more now to climb and it's better to stay healthier because you can carry on fighting. If you're not trading perfectly, that is fine. Just buy two health potions when you base and it kind of covers that up. So for 100 gold, you cover up your bad trading. I take that every time. The third thing is learn how to trade properly. I have videos on this. I'll put a link to one of them down below, but trading is the key to winning lane and it's more important to do it now in season six because you want to get ahead. So one of the biggest things I get asked about is what do I do with my lead when I win my lane? How do I actually win the whole game from there? And that's what the last two steps are for. This is different in season six because before we could just sit back and it didn't really matter, but now roaming is really important. The first one, most important is bot lane tower. That's the first thing I try to get. Pretty obvious, but it's worth even more after the mid season update. So it's now a nice chunk of gold. I know I'm a bit of a dick for this, but I actually tell my support to go away when I get the final blow. It's 300 gold split between those around it, right? Most people don't realize that, but that's like a kill plus in a global 100 gold. So support, bugger off and give me my 400 gold. Next up is dragons. Yes, it does mean more. It's right next to your lane. That's kind of why the lane phase means more. If you force them to base, you take it. If you get a gank and they base or die, just take it. Anytime you have a numbers advantage, go for dragon. So if I can't do that, I go to get mid tower, then top tower, even maybe rift herald if that's still up. It's actually kind of hard to dive though. So that's where dragon is also so important. Not only do you get the buffs, but it's the perfect way to make them come to you once every five minutes. It gets them away from towers and forces a fire. This leads nicely onto my last step, team fighting. It's weird because it's just 5v5, right? That's surely the same every season. Well, actually, no, not really. It's kind of different in season six. Riot have this really weird fascination of giving every single champion some kind of jump or whatever, and now we can't build defense, so we're really sad. Okay, that sounded a bit pathetic, but basically you can't go balls deep anymore and expect to run away with a fight and win it, even if you're ahead. This is kind of where threat assessment comes in and is way more important now. This is why I wanted to focus on it. All we have to do is look at their team, work out what can kill you, and then we'll just adjust to play around that. 99% of the time, this is kind of thinking about cooldowns. It's very easy, honestly. Even my dad could do this and use this advice. Okay, press tab, see what's dangerous to us, like a Fed LeBlanc. The actual threat with the LeBlanc is their ultimate to burst us down. With a Moo, his actual threat is the ultimate, the stun. Darius, the actual threat is his apprehend or the E pulling thing. With a Jax, it's his stun and his jump. If we look at it like this, we're narrowing it down to a very select few things that we actually have to dodge. And the best idea is to wait until they are used, then we can go nuts. We're actually going to use our team as meat shields here effectively. Let them absorb the cooldowns and then we go in. That is half of team fighting now in season six. It's not just all mechanics or being a god. It's going in when it's safe. This is also why I said champions who can do more from range are best in season six. While waiting for like an Amumu ultimate, we can Lucian ult or we can poke with that Ezreal Q. We don't just have to sit there and wait like a vain would. So that wraps up this video and hopefully you now have a much better idea of how to climb as an AD carry in season six. Thank you again to Pro Guides. All of their stuff is down below. You can like, subscribe, comment, share this video. But for now, let's go to the robots.